بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين um, my, my name is Paul Enright um, which has now become Yusuf Enright when I became a Muslim um, I've been Muslim for about six years I was living in Sydney um, and I had some really, uh, my best mates or brothers were Turkish. Um, this is when I wasn't a Muslim and basically um, through them I met their father and they gave me dower essentially. Um, they spoke to me about Islam and I was um, in a state at that time as looking at the truth, um, find, trying to find what the truth was. As I sort of came from a typical Australian um, Christian background, whereas we didn't go to church, but you know we're a Christian by sort of culture or whatever you call it. Um, and basically, I'd asked a lot of questions to various um, priests and pastors and all that, and I never seemed to be able to get the answer to the hard questions like the Trinity and so on. Um, later on down the track, um, I was I spent a fair bit of time in Turkey and spent a lot of time around imams and that and I, I basically asked a lot of the hard questions that um, or asked a lot of questions uh, that you know I wanted to sort of catch them out if you if you will like I trying to get them the questions that they couldn't answer and there was no questions that I ever asked that w w didn't have a perfect answer to it Well, basically, I was searching for the truth. Is the main point. Um, like I, like I believe, I always believed in God. I, I never had that atheist mentality of there's no God or anything like that. I always believed there was a creator, and I always had something in my heart for God. Um, it's just I didn't know. Um, like I wasn't sure what was correct, if you know what I mean. So, basically, I did some searching. Um, you know, and friends helped me and sort of. You know, for um, a friend's father, my friend's father gave me a Quran and I read it. Um, at that time, I sort of said, like, you know, when he gave it to me, I sort of said, oh, yeah, I'll just read it. And I didn't think much of it. Like, I never saw myself becoming a Muslim. And then time went on. And I, um, one of the big things is I noticed um, with Muslim girls, uh, like in a lot of their like sisters and things like that, I noticed how they behaved. And that was a big thing for me too, because I'd look at them and go, "Wow, look at you know, look at how they are, the, um, you know, respect their parents, look how they act to their husbands, look how they act in general." And um, I really liked that, so it was like a positive thing that I looked at, and that made me further want to look into things. Um, and yeah, basically the whole concept of there's only one God, and we only worship that God. There's no partners, anything like that which, you know, made complete sense. And I'd seen many, like, many things referred to in the Bible of that and the Ten Commandments and things like that. Yeah, that, that was one of the big things because I never understood the Trinity and things like it. And I have actually family that are not my direct family, but other family through my dad's side of the family that are very religious and they're worldwide missionaries. They've been to Philippines, Africa and everywhere else. And whether them or other, you know, other religious leaders I went to, there's just certain things people couldn't answer and the common answer you'll get from some of the Christian leaders will be just have faith, brother. That doesn't make much sense to me because, uh, you know, I'm very analytical, I guess. So I want, like, I want some sort of evidence. I don't just want, oh, that's the way to go and just do it and that's it. And then, you know, everything I asked about Islam to people of knowledge in Islam, there was always a, a good answer and I was sort of coming up with questions that had, like I was trying to get a, a question that would put someone in the corner and they wouldn't be able to answer it and I would go for the hard questions and always there came out to be a perfect answer um, and one of, the, one of the big things too was um, what I did when I was searching for the truth um, around this time when I was starting to see you know so much good about Islam because obviously we'd had negative um, sort of portrayal by media and a lot of other people um, one of the things I did was I, I said, uh, like, you know, Allah, God, please um, tell me, like, tell, please show me what is the truth. Because I, you know, I want to follow 
you know, I want to follow you and the truth. I want to follow you how you want to be followed. And, you know, and Allah guided me. And, yeah, and alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim. So the way my family and friends reacted, um, basically my mother, she was um, very, I don't know, I think she had a bit of a sort of a worry about it in, in some sort of a way, like, oh, you know, well, is he going to go and run over and go and fight in Afghanistan or something? Um, but, you know, she was very accepting being, you know, your mother always sort of is accepting in, in that sort of a way. Um, my father, on the other hand, was um, very negative towards the whole idea, like, he said to me, actually, why don't you, you could have become a Buddhist or something like that, at least they're peaceful. And, you know, he had that real negative mentality. Um, and basically what I have really noticed with him in particular is when um, I got married four years ago and, you know, and he was um, really against me getting married overseas because I got married in Turkey. And, um, but since he's met my wife and been around my wife, he's actually said to me on a number of occasions, um, you're a very lucky man. And, and I said, and I, I basically said to him, it's not about luck, it's, it's about, you know, searching for the right woman and that's, that's um, you know, Islam, you know. Um, and yeah, so he, his mindset has changed around a lot, um, well, I think so anyway, and they've come to accept that, you know, nothing's going to change no matter what anyway, um, regardless of, you know, what other people think, where, uh, you know, I'm doing this to please my creator, not people. So as much as I respect my parents, um, and you know, and inshallah they can find Islam as well. Uh, as far as my life uh, changing, um, I'd say like in the very initial stages it didn't change a hell of a lot. I was sort of a little bit airy-fairy, uh, not really doing much to be a Muslim other than calling myself a Muslim. And then I got to a stage a little bit down the track and, um, you know, and, you know, started to see that it's not just about calling yourself a Muslim, it's about practicing it, it's about a way of life. Um, and, yeah, it um, gives you, um, it gives you a beautiful feeling to know that you're following the truth and, you know, that you're doing the right thing rather than following, you know, necessarily what your ancestors followed or what, everyone else thinks is right or wrong, you, you're following what is truth. Um, and, yeah, I find that a really um, beautiful thing. Yeah, and basically, as I was saying, like, um, yeah, so then I started to realise that uh, Islam is not just about talking, it's about practising. And, you know, so then I, you know, began to pray and do the things I was supposed to do. And it, um, that in itself, when you pray and when you, you're doing the right things and praying five times a day, you just feel so much comfort and um, you, don't, you don't worry about, you know, like if you've got, you know, a nice car, you don't, you don't worry so much about the problems of life because, you know, you've got something that's much more important. You're looking to where you're going to, like getting towards where you want to be, which is, you know, where everyone really wants to be is in heaven, in paradise, in Jannah. Um, and what else was I saying? Um, uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and then, you know, there was a period of time then, you know, I sort of went off the tracks in, in the fact that, you know, I started drinking every now and then again and, you know, and you start hanging around the wrong people, so, you know, which you, then you, you know, you have a drink here and you have a drink there and it sort of, you know, then you get away from praying and then you've got people around you, I oh, don't worry about that and you start to drop off with your prayers and, you know, go back to your old sort of lifestyle. Um, and, you know, that's the constant struggle we've got to follow what God wants us to do or Allah wants us to do or follow what, you know, our own, our own uh, will, I suppose. And now, basically, um, you know, it's, it's about uh, realising that you've gone off the track, you're not where you should be and getting back to where you, yeah, you want to be and that's, you know, pleasing Allah and doing the things you're supposed to do like praying five times a day, you know, and, and you know, doing all the things that we're supposed to do like giving charity and, you know, fasting during Ramadan. And, you know, w one thing I notice, when you, sometimes, um, you know, when you go through a hard time in life, you, the, the first thing you'll do is just um, go away from your religion, you go away from the good things. 
but the best thing to do is is to pray, and that's when it fixes it all up, and you feel good, and you um, you know you, you feel content, and you feel you're doing the right thing. So you know that's that's a struggle I guess we have, and that's to be um, doing always moving towards being a better Muslim, and inshallah, you know we, we're all gonna um, yeah do the right thing and. Um, now I'm at a point I uh, really want to go to Hajj, and um, that's um, you know as a lot of people would know that is one of the five pillars of Islam. One of the things you have to do in life if you can afford it and you're able to make it there. And um, I, I really want to do that because I think um, that's sort of like a really a big seal that's going to help you know you really get your head in and and keep doing the right thing and. And um, you know, be a better Muslim, inshallah. And it, uh, you know, if we do our Hajj, we can. We're going to get guidance as well because you're you're trying to please Allah with that as well. Um, what what can Islam offer ordinary people? Well, um, you know, it's a common thing you hear people say: the truth will set you free. Um, offer Islam gives you freedom. It gives you freedom. Um, it gives you freedom from everything because we fo we we follow Allah and, and Allah alone. So we follow God. Um, we don't follow you know other things. We, it, it's just about um, pleasing pleasing Allah and and, and living a life um, that's gonna inshallah get us to go to where we want to be in, in in heaven. Um, and it, what it can offer to people, it, it can, it's cured people, Islam has cured people of drug addictions, Islam has cured people of the worst, uh, the worst people have become beautiful people because of Islam, um, and it's, it's a real, um, yeah, I mean at the end of the day, who doesn't want to follow truth? It's, that's the most important thing, so, yeah. So, um, like and with, with this um, does um, is Islam and being an Australian, um, which is I'm a wide angle of Australian, and being an Australian and being a Muslim, do they have any conflicts? Not at all. Um, Islam is not something that's there for the Arabs or there for Indonesians or there for blacks or whites or whatever. Islam is there for all of humanity. It's it's the it's it's the seal. It's it's essentially um, taking Islam is taking everyone back to you know, where we should be and that's worshipping one God and one God alone. And, you know, God has power over everything. And it's, it's, it's taking us back to the, it's the same message that was, you know, brought by Moses and Jesus and peace be upon all of them and, and Muhammad and Noah and all, all the prophets. It's about worshipping one God. So, I mean, essentially it's, it's for all of humanity, no matter what your race. And there's, there's no distinction between races in Islam. And that's a beautiful thing that you... You know, unfortunately, we see in society that you know I'm white, I'm black, I'm Chinese, I'm Arab, I'm this, I'm that. We're all the same, and I think if you know if the whole world embraced Islam, the world would be a much more beautiful place. Um, I, I suppose yeah, I, you know, the only thing I'd like to say is, um, inshallah, that. You know that my my family and the people I do love and care for that aren't Muslim that they can that they do find Islam before it's too late before their death. You know we've you know all all the evidence is there. If I um, if people go to looking for the truth with an open heart and really read Islam and look into Islam, uh, you know with an open open mind, not with you know preconceived things that have come from the media or preconceived things from you know various things we see in the media now and uh, from other people, if they really go with it um, from, a, from a perspective as they want to look at it as if they never knew nothing about it and read it, then I believe that, you know, there would be, you know, you will find the truth if, you're, if your heart is there to um, welcome it. And, yeah, and I just hope that, um, you know, you, everyone that I do love becomes Muslim, inshallah, and you can have that peace. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين